is this? Running diagnostics, testing its logic circuit. What is this? But I'm input, going to input, reboot input, it. Input, input, input. Right. Come on. Or let All us right. boot it up. Turn See if you can boot it. D station. Come on, Ready. now. Wouldn't you like to be a pepper too? Wouldn't you like to be a pepper too? Hey again, everyone. I've been taking a poke around the Auto 1111 Stable Diffusion front end after being away from it for a few months. Wow, has it changed a lot. The devs seem to have gone through a lot of trouble to preserve past functionality while adding new features, and I can still figure out how to do most of what I want to do, though a lot of the time it's blindly twisting knobs and regenerating until things look right. While the gacha game of Regeneration Roulette can be satisfying, what really fascinated me about Stable Diffusion was fine-tuning the models. Back in the early days, I did a few videos on fine-tuning using the Koya SS script, which was undergoing rapid and active development with many breaking changes. The Koya scripts have evolved to become a full-featured training GUI, which should make any future model training go a little smoother. Though the one-click installer may be a little deceptive. I did have a ton of trouble getting the Koya suite up and running, and finally settled on using it in WSL Ubuntu on top of Windows 10. Stable diffusion models are fine-tuned with image and text pairs, with the initial tags coming from the LAION dataset. LAION's tagging is, well, sort of awful compared to what's available today. The SD Web UI and the Koya scripts both have their own image tagging and captioning built in. With either the built-in support or through extensions, you can use the Waifu Diffusion models, Flip or Clip, to tag images in the web UI. Koya supports tagging through the same models, with additional Waifu Diffusion models supported. You can use one to tag images in your training dataset, or sequence several by appending future transcriptions to the ones you've already generated. I stumbled across a couple additional image tagging models that could be very useful for semi-automated caption generation. Those are the Recognize Anything model and the Blip2 model published by Salesforce. I won't be handing you a point-and-click GUI for any of this, but if you know some basic Python and can work a Jupyter Notebook, you shouldn't have too much difficulty in getting these up and running. First up, let's take a look at Recognize Anything. Recognize Anything goes beyond what something like Clip does by incorporating image descriptions and a small LLM which, if I understand the description from the paper, allows it to derive category tags from previously unseen categories. The project is hosted on GitHub and comes with a simple demo notebook, and a GUI notebook that may be more directly useful if you want to use it for tagging for stable diffusion models. Follow the installation instructions on the project's GitHub and install the requirements. The model weights will be downloaded from Hugging Face if the checkpoints don't already exist when the model loader runs, and they're stored in the pre-trained subdirectory of the project. I did run into some problems when running the simple demo notebook. The notebook makes external calls to three Python scripts, depending on which options are selected. It seems that the batch inference here requires a specifically formatted dataset of images and tags, so it doesn't really work with the set of images in the demo. There are two tagging models in this project that I want to use in sequence. First, RAM Plus will generate tags when fed a processed image, then tag to text can be fed a processed image and the generated tags used for guidance, and will output its own set of tags and a grammatically rich caption sentence. The models for RAM Plus and the tag to text model are available on Hugging Face and supported by Transformers, so it's easy to work with them. The GUI notebook included with the repo integrates the Segment Anything model as well through a project called Grounded Segment Anything, which outputs boxes and masks for recognized segments. That's a little beyond the scope of this video, but later on in another video, I want to use the bounding boxes and associated tags to automatically crop out selected tags. I've tweaked the demo notebook and inference scripts to loop through a directory and caption images. To show a real-world example of the models, I'll go over my tremendously messy and inefficient code that I wrote at 2.30am, and you can tweak it for your needs. My tagging code is two stages. I'll first pass through the RAM plus model to generate tags. 
Then a pass through the tag to text model to generate the sentence using the first set of tags for guidance, with the output being a joined string of all the tags and a sentence. Before running the images through Recognize Anything, I want to check if they're valid. There are faster ways to do this, but this method repeats the conversion to RGB done later by the underlying code. Most methods to check if images are valid will only look at the headers or verify the first few bytes of the image. This will fully process the image, so if there are any errors later on in the file, they'll be caught. If you set the variable here to 1 and then run the cell, the broken images will be deleted. This section will run the image files through the Recognize Anything Plus model and generate a file named image base name dot caption alongside the image. If you have prior caption files, they'll be overwritten. The second section reads the caption file if it exists and supplies the tags to tag to text. Then it will output a caption file with the supplied tags, if any, the sentence, and the generated tags. The caption should be manually reviewed and edited for accuracy, but what's generated is ready for use in the Koya Dream Booth and LoRa training scripts for stable diffusion. Another alternative that can be used for tagging is Blip2 from Salesforce. The version of Blip2 discussed here is a combination of the Opt Large Language Model from MetaAI and the VIT Vision Encoder brought together by what the authors have called a querying transformer. There are a 2.7 billion and a 6 billion parameter version of the Blip2 model using Opt, both available on Hugging Face and supported by the Transformers pipeline. But they're both massive models and won't fit on my 12 gigabyte GPU. Fortunately, someone going by the name Mediocre at my best has released quantized versions of the models. When loaded in 8-bit, the Blip2 Opt 2.7 billion parameter model takes about 9 gigabytes of VRAM on my system when generating captions. With bits and bytes, this can also be loaded in 4-bit, but it doesn't seem to run any faster on my system, so I stick with 8-bit loading. I have taken the same basic loop from earlier and used it to generate captions here. Unmodified, this will overwrite any generated captions already found. A list of questions can be put in the questions list variable in the format question colon your query answer colon. The first in the list is queried, the answer is given, and then future questions are appended. Blip often gives very good descriptions unprompted, and if you just want simple captioning, you may want to just leave it as is. However, questions like, is this image unusual, can be used for downstream filtering tasks, or is the subject human, animal, or object. The generator takes various arguments that can be used to alter the output similar to other LLMs. I find it most useful to set the max length and min length for unprompted generation. For prompts, you may need to finesse your parameters a bit to get the desired output across your whole dataset. But running Blip2 can be a little slow, so you may need to abort a run if you're tagging a whole lot of images. I've wrapped the loop in TQDM so you can see the progress. The image file names come from a list, so if you want to resume captioning later on, keep an eye on the TQDM counter. If you've captioned 200 out of 1000 images, truncate the file list for the next run with file path equals file path square bracket starting point two colons and then close a the square bracket. Blip2 is an incredible model. The quality of the natural language responses about images can be great if you've dialed in the right parameters. The opt model has a context window of 512 tokens, which is small, but plenty to work with if you're just running stacked queries on images. Here's an example of using multiple queries. First I just take the original caption, and then I'll try, is there a human in this image? And is this image unusual? You probably wouldn't want to use this type of query for captioning, but you could use the logic to classify images into separate datasets. When using multiple queries, you'll probably only be interested in the final answer that takes into context the prior questions and answers. One way to get rich captions and keywords that can work well if you find the right settings for your dataset is to first pass an empty prompt, then as a second question, ask a, for a description of the image. If you do this, probably avoid appending answers to the original question as in the chat style method. Just store each in a list. 
I wasn't originally planning on talking about this model because I don't have much experience using it. However, the caption results are pretty great, it's quite fast, and it's a little bit odd to get working. Cosmos 2 is another multimodal model put out by a team sponsored by Microsoft. Like the others I've talked about, it's available on Hugging Face and supported by Transformers. This model is pretty amazing. On my system it takes about 7GB of VRAM to run inference when loaded in 4-bit. Using bits and bytes to load in 8-bit or 4-bit will work, with some significant quirks. 8-bit loading takes a little less memory and runs about the same speed, and has about the same accuracy as the normally loaded model. When loaded in 4-bit, it takes about a quarter of the time for inference, but the output is very different. It's often much more brief when using the same parameters, and may be prone to giving a list of keywords or tags rather than a rich sentence. But when doing bulk captioning for stable diffusion model training, you may want that brevity. The increase in speed alone may be worth it. I've taken the same basic captioning loop from earlier and modified it for the Cosmos 2 model. Questions need to be prefixed with the tag grounding, and the images are directly converted before passing here. I've been using this loop to generate a brief and a longer, more descriptive caption. And then I store each model response in a list and later join them. I do some additional text cleaning before writing the caption file, which probably isn't needed when using FP16 or 8-bit. Loading in 4-bit to push the speed introduces a, quite a few inconsistencies. Well, in things here, I'll go on forever adding new segments to the video. I just wanted to share two, now three I guess, multimodal large language models. Check the description for resource links, and code snippets can be copied pasted from my forever incomplete site that I've linked down below. If you found this video helpful, please share it, like it, or if you want more similar odd tutorial videos and me poking around old computers, hit subscribe. Thanks for watching, and as always, stay human.